Thank you, Doctor. Take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to the book of Romans, chapter 16. Many years ago, 10 plus years, for the stringer, I guess maybe could be 12, 13, 14 years ago, we had a meeting at Bering Precious Seed in Milford, Ohio. You came to that meeting. <coughs> And my interest was, as the general director of that ministry, was to make sure that what we were printing were faithful, accurate, and true translations of the Word of God. And that they had, were coming from the right text. And I knew very little about that. I knew the great debates in Mexico as I was a missionary since I was 23 years of age and my wife 21, when we moved to Mexico, I knew the issues with the Spanish Bible, but really did not know much about translation, knew very little about the textual issues, made trips to England to speak with uh, TBS and other men like the men that are with the King James Bible Research Council. And they helped me tremendously. And so what I do is I'm a facilitator. I work with nationals and missionaries around the world to help them to get a faithful and accurate and true translation of the word of God into their language. Brother Mann, thank you. Thank you for what you just gave us. And we need to hear that. We need to realize what a translation is, that it's no less than the word of God when it's done correctly. And we could go and ask all kinds of questions and say, you know, why do we have a faithful, accurate, and true translation that we wouldn't change in the English language, but I can't find one in any other language that's not being tweaked and not being changed sometime or another. So we can ask all of those questions. We can say, well, if God gave his word by inspiration in the translation, then, then I'm like you. My job is finished. I don't have any more jobs to do. I just tell him, get the inspiration from God. He'll tell you, you don't need anything from me. I can't teach you anything. Let God give you the inspired word in the translation, and you'll write it down, and that'll be perfect. So we know that that's not the way that it's done. And so it is a great task, but it's not an impossible task. And it's a task and assignment that God has given the church not to any other organization, and that's where we are having big problems today because other organizations have taken over ownership of that. And so this morning I want to speak to you on this subject. I am not King James only. What does this mean? In Romans chapter 16, begin reading at verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart, the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now notice with me in verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Christ Jesus Christ forever. Amen. I read this article in 
from the Trinitarian Bible Society, in 1904, the British and the Foreign Bible Society issued an edition of the critical text prepared by Eberhard Nessel and based upon the work of Tissendor, Westcott, Hort, and Weiss. The same year, the annual report of the Trinitarian Bible Society made this plain statement in contradiction to the confusion being promoted by their liberal counterparts. There is a great shaking going on all around us. The foundations are being displaced. Ancient landmarks are being removed. Institutions are being assault, assail, assaulted. Confusion is written on all things e ecclesiastical and political. There is only one thing that can sustain us in times like these, and that is the living faith in the living God. It is the design of the enemy to quench the lamp of inspiration to get rid of the supernatural and miraculous in the word of God, to break down its authority and integrity by minimizing differences of translations. If the Bible is not the word of God, but only contains it, then one version can contain it or as much of it as another. If there is no such thing as the Bible, then a Bible or any Bible will do. The enemy cares not by what agency he gains his great end of making the word of God of none effect. The enemy will use any instrument to accomplish his purposes, and the greater and the better the agent, the more effectively will he obtain his ends. Wow. This could be written today. 1904. Not long ago, I was in the hospital for a procedure. And uh, in the room there where they were going to perform the procedure, the, the doctor hadn't arrived, and it was just myself and a nurse. And I noticed that the nurse had a distinct accent, an accent uh, Middle Eastern. And I asked her, I said, uh, where are you from? She said, I'm from Iraq. I said, oh, wow. I said, I've been to Iraq before. And she looked, she thought, well, maybe I was a soldier, maybe I was military. He, she said, well, what did you do in Iraq? I said, well, I was in Erbil, Kurdistan, interviewing a prospective translator of the Sarani language. And I said, uh, and she seemed to be very interested. I said, are you a Christian? Oh, she said, oh, no. I'm a Muslim. And then she asked me this question. She said, why are there so many Bibles in your language? And we only have one. You see, never forget that Satan will do everything that he can to dilute, to cause confusion, and doubt concerning the word of God. How many Bibles did God give us? Well, I think for us it's very easy to come to that conclusion. God gave us one Bible. There's only one Bible given by the act of inspiration, but translated into many languages. If we're not careful, we set the wrong rules for Bible translation and the, outcan uh, the outcome of that can be confusing. Exactly what Satan desires. From the very beginning, Satan was trying to write a very brand new text. When he said, yea, hath God said. So what does it mean? What does it mean when somebody says, I'm not King James only. Now, some of us that preach in a lot of different churches, we hear this quite often. Maybe if you're just in one church and you're the pastor of your church, you might not hear that very often, but I'm sure that the evangelists and the missionaries as we travel around this country 
and go to different places, we're constantly hearing that phrase that I'm not King James only. And I remember hearing that for the very first time, and I thought to myself, I wonder what they mean by that. And never heard one of them, never heard one of them give an explanation of why they were uh, King James only. Some think that being King James only is to be to the uh, ultra right. And sometimes it would cause, uh, maybe they would think there would be cultic tendencies with that. I remember when we had the King James Bible Research meeting in my church, Plantation Baptist Church in Plantation, Florida. And my pastor, who is my nephew, Tom Hunter Jr., asked me, Uncle, I got to ask you this question. When we have this meeting, are, are people going to come with big signs and plastered all of their all over their car, King James only, and their license plates going to say KJV 1611? And it, it kind of scared him. He thought that that's what was going to take place at Plantation Baptist Church in Plantation, Florida. And I said, no. I said, that's not what's going to happen. He said, well, I... I, I was a little nervous, and if we have that, that may cause a lot of problems here. And I understood what he was saying, and of course, that was not the issue. For those that look at the King James Bible as an inferior, outdated, faulty translation, they see this phrase, King James only, as an expression to, to oppose the defense of the King James Bible and its underlying original language text. Some will define King James only as extremism. Now we have a wonderful book translated in the English languages. We have 66 books here written in, uh, uh, the, the original Bible written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. In our English Bible, we have 39 uh, chapters in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. And, and I'm just giving you these stats. You probably already know these, but there's a point to it. 1,189 chapters, 31,102 verses, 788,280 words. So when we talk about Bible translation, we're not just talking about somebody standing behind the pulpit and somebody standing next to them that I have done hundreds of times and translated for them, translated their messages from English into Spanish. But when we're talking about Bible translation, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of languages. It's not an easy task. Written over a period of nearly 1,600 years, but with, with uh, some 40 different authors and no contradictions, no errors in the Word of God. And so you and I can stand assured that we stand upon the very words of God that he intended for us to have. And so we believe that. And now we're to translate, translate that into the languages of this world. But how does one come to this position that they're not King James only? From the teaching and the practices of the churches, the colleges, the leaders, the fellowships, if there are following leaders and teachers who have studied and accepted the writings of, of heretics of, uh, of the truth, the result is a falling, failing, falling away from the sound doctrine. So when we look at the professors and when we look at, at these people that do not believe that we have an accurate and faithful translation in the King James Bible, they are parroting or they are mimicking those that have taught them. And I, I think Brother Stringer, or Stringer said it last night. Someone said it that these are good. Some of these people are good people. I'm not talking about their professors or those that are writing the books. But somewhere along the line, they missed it. And they're following those people. Now they are just repeating what they have heard. Psalm 12, verse 6, says that we have these words from generation forever. From generation to generation, we have the preserved word of God. So why do some say that they're not King, John, 
King James only. Some say that they're not King James only for the lack of knowledge on the subject and unable to defend the right position. They compromise since there are those in their congregation using other translations. I find this constantly, constantly. When I look at people's Bibles in the congregation, the preacher may be using the King James, but I look through the congregation, they're using all different kinds of translations. Then I will hear that preacher say, well, we are not just King James only in this church. And they do that because they don't want to be offensive to the people that are sitting in the pew. And so they compromise their position, not teaching their people why they should use the King James Bible. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I ask pastors all the time, I said, let me take the time to teach your people. He said, oh, no, no, Brother Zion, I don't, I don't want you to do that. That would cause great problems in our church and great division. Well, first of all, because he doesn't know the issue and he couldn't defend the issue. And so I realized that. And so sometimes it's just an excuse not to address the issue. But they have forgotten that this is the foundation that they're building upon. Number two, because of their new church position, we find this, oh my. Since I graduated from Midwestern Baptist College in 1971, many of the fellows that I went to school with at that time, I think we had maybe three, between three or 400 students. The majority of them were pastoral students going out and starting churches, winning people to Christ, and building churches. And uh, I remember those students. I've gone to those churches seeking support as a missionary. And some of those churches have dropped my support because they say, well, we're no longer King James, or we're no longer Baptist. And so they've made some definite changes in their churches, in their ministry. Not long ago, there was a church in the Cincinnati area where my son was a member. And uh, I noticed that they started making some serious changes in their philosophy. They wanted to make some serious fundamental changes. First of all, the first thing that they had to change was their stand on the King James Bible. They informed me that they are no longer just King James Bible, but they are New King James. And they thinking, as one of their missionaries that they supported, they said, Brother Zainer, that's not a problem with you, right? Because we're, we're still King James. Now they're New King James. But it didn't stop there. It went on to other things. Eventually, it went to the changing of the name of their church. They were no longer Baptists. Uh, and always the new name that they pick always depicts who they are. New beginnings, uh, beloved church, all of these type of things. And, uh, but they will never have a meeting with those that are in the church that are strong King James people. They always seem to have a meeting when those people aren't there. And then all of a sudden, it, it comes to light in the church. And so... All of these other things, these changes that they make in the church begins with not being King James only. Some use it as a badge of pride, maybe from their education or higher education on the subject. These are those that have read and been taught over the years by their peers and have followed blindly their teaching. They're, they are those that have studied Greek and Hebrew and have become very good at it. I have a great friend in Albuquerque. A great friend. A great personal friend. And uh, he goes to a church that's a King James only. And he said, he's retired, he's up in years. And he said, well, Brother Zainer, I want you to come visit our church. He said, it's a church that you would really like. Referring to, he's not King James. But he said, you would love this church. And so he and I would talk. And I... And I'd say, brother, the difference between you and I is, uh, I said, I think that we have some same differences, same things. 
I said, I believe that both of us believe with all of our hearts what we believe. But the problem is that you have that total belief on the wrong text. And you can prove your point from the wrong text. And you won't accept the other. And so he's a professor of it. He's a teacher of it. But sometimes it's a badge of pride and they won't change from that. Others, not understanding what a translation is, have caused some to embrace this, posi this position. This will they will often say that God gave his word by inspiration and the originals have no errors but have dif difficulties with the copies or choosing the received text or the critical text. They refuse to approach the Bible text from a position of faith in divine preservation. Since they are wavering in their fundamental position concerning the scripture, they take the position that they are not King James only. They have no idea what a translation is. They will say, they will sign the doctrinal statement, we believe in the inspiration of the scripture as it was given, but then it stops right there. It goes no further. Others take the position, and in some of these responses, I did get on the telephone, I did talk to some of my friends personally, and I asked them, tell me what it means not to be King James only. Because some of them are not King James only. And I had to be real kind when I talked to them because I didn't want them to be mad at me or give me a false reason. I really wanted to know why they felt that. Some of them said, a lot of them said, because of the association of Peter Ruckman. I don't want to be associated with Peter Ruckman. I'm not going to be King James only because if I'm that, everybody will associate me with Peter Ruckman. Well, that's really not a good reason. You really hadn't thought that out very much. For others, they look at the King James Bible as just another translation. Since other translations are constantly being scrutinized by professors and theologians and commentaries, they have come to the conclusion we cannot trust a translation. And they're always hearing every year a new translation is coming out. Now, if you were in their shoes, you might say, well, I guess I'm not King James only either. With all of these different translations, if you're believing what these, the commentaries and what all of these people are saying. And so there's been an attack on the word of God, on the very words of God that have been translated into other languages, believing that you cannot have a faithful and accurate and true translation in the word of God. As I said in the past, a preacher called me from up in Toledo area when I was the director at Bearing Precious Seat, and he said, Brother Zander, you know that we, no one can have a perfect Bible except those that re read English. And I listened to him for about 20 minutes, and finally I had enough of that guy. I didn't care if he supported the ministry or not. I said, Brother, let me tell you something. I don't believe a word that you're saying. And he said, oh, oh, oh. I said, listen, I speak Spanish. Are you telling me that none of the Mexican people could have a faithful, accurate, and true translation of the word of God. And if they want to get the real word of God, they've got to learn English. You see, this is the idea that some people have. And that idea carries on to others. And that's why we have all of this confusion here. How much time do we spend on debating and trying to prove our point with the English Bible when there's, if there's some 7,000 languages on the face of the earth, 6,999 of them, we don't give them the time of day. And we spend all of this time here. Somebody asked me the other day, how many ministries are doing what you're doing? Three. Three ministries. That's it. Amongst the fundamental independent Baptist churches, there are only three ministries. There are a bunch of bearing precious seed ministries that are printing the scriptures. Thank God for them. I'm happy for them. But there are only three ministries that are dealing 
with the evidence of Bible translation to make sure that what is being printed is a faithful, accurate, and true translation of the Word of God. I've been to the ministries and looked at the scriptures that they were printed and said to the director, this is a Westcott and Hort translation that you are printing. And you're asking the church's money to print perverted Bibles. I don't understand that. Well, brother, we don't have... We don't have the knowledge. It seemed like the Bible talks about that a little bit. Study and find out, investigate, research, find out what the missionaries are using. Some parrot their, their fellow pastors and friends. They just, well, this is what my friends believe and this is what I believe. And so these are some of the issues and some of the problems that we have. Uh, what are the reaching effects of this position? If someone says that they are not King James only, how will that affect them and how will this affect the world? In verse 18, we find these words of Romans uh, 16. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Faulty translations of the Word of God. The Bible societies around the world, each country has their Bible society. I've been to Burma, the Burmese Bible Society. Uh, I've been to India, the India Bible Society. I've been to many of these different countries. Korea, the Korean Bible Society. And all of them want to be associated with Wycliffe Bible translators. If you go to their websites, they always, at the bottom, they always say, in association <clears throat> with Wycliffe Bible translators. Because Wycliffe Bible translators is the premier, in the eyes of the world, premier translating group in the whole entire world. And so when you're part of the UBS, the United Bible Society, then you have clout, you have prestige, you have some ownership in certain countries. There are countries, for example, like, uh, like Cuba. I remember uh, in a church in Dayton, they were getting a whole bunch of Bibles together and they were going to send them to Cuba. Well, you're not going to send those Bibles, a whole container of scriptures to Cuba. It's not going to go unless it goes through the United Bible Society of Cuba. Because they have an agreement with the Cuban government. And the only Bible that they allowed to come in through that agreement is the 1960 Spanish Bible. And so they understand that and they realize that. And so this is the battle that you and I are in, the church is in today as we're trying to get faithful, accurate, true translations into the hands of these people around the world. And so we have these faulty translations. The quest, they question the authority of God's word. It has no doubtly weakened the church. When I don't feel and trust that I have the word of God, do you not think that that weakens the position of the church? Now, we don't have this problem here in the United States. But you travel with me to Togo or you travel with me to Ghana. Togo has 40-some different languages amongst around 10 million people. And one of the main languages is the Ewe, E-W-E language. Around a million people speak that language. And when the United Bible Society or the Bible Society or Wycliffe did the translation there in Togo... They did it in an association, in an ecumenical association. So when they come to words like baptism, guess how they translated baptism? They really weren't taking in consideration the Baptist group that baptizes by immersion. They translated it sprinkled. So when the preacher is baptized, and this is an ordinance that the preachers are doing constantly, so every time they baptize and they look at and read those, those verses, 
They have to make a correction to it that it's a bad translation. They didn't translate it right. Or maybe they're Presbyterian friends and say, no, that is translated right. So why would any group do that? For money. Yes, sir. Because if they can get the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the Baptists, and everybody else to buy their Bible, now they can make a profit. Now they have enough money so that they can produce and sell their Bible in that country. Yeah. In Togo, they use the Louis Segon French Bible. Why? Because that's all that's available. We're getting ready to send a whole container, Brother Levesque, a whole container, 2,000 uh, brand new uh, French translated Bibles from Brother Mario Mon uh, Monet from Quebec, uh, Can uh, Canada, uh, uh, somewhere between five and 10,000 New Testaments, and the rest of them are bilingual French, Away, John and Romans, the first of next year. Now, we're going to have difficulty getting that into the country because we're not part of the UBS. And so it may cost a lot of money for taxes. But money is not a problem with God when he wants his word to go forward. Yeah. It'll go forward. And so we find great apostasy that comes in our churches. The falling away, the desertion from one religion or, or uh, from one's religion, cause or principles, departure from the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 1, know th this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, Brother Brown, I, I don't know if you've produced it, but Brother Taylor, who is on our board, uh, produced uh, an article on uh, 1 Peter. Uh, um, 122, or one, 1 Peter 1 2. And uh, the verse uh, dealing with this sincere milk of the word. That verse is one of the major, major verses. There are many, but that verse is one of the major verses that we have a huge issue in the Spanish Bible. Because if you look at the ESV, you look at the NIV, you look at all of those, it's that you might grow unto salvation. That's not what our Bible says. And when I show that to my friends, Brother Stringer, when I show that to my friends that speak Spanish, I was just in Ecuador and I showed it to a Cuban missionary who is serving in Ecuador, Cuban. And at his table, in his kitchen table, he said, well, what's wrong with our Bible? And I said, well, let's, let's turn to that verse and look at it, read it. And he read it, and this is what he said. What's wrong with that verse? I said, well, let's, let's do a little study of that verse. What does that mean without comparing it with any other verse? I said, what does that verse mean? And he sat there and looked at me and he said, I don't know. I said, well, let's look at the English. I said, you speak English. Let's look at the English. And he read the English. He said, hey, those words are not in the English. I said, why do you think they're not in the English? Now, this is a man who asked me to come and preach in his church. And I went to interview a prospective translator in Ecuador along the, in the Amazon. And he wanted me to preach out of the 1960 Bible. And I said, I will do that as long as I don't have to use verses that are not correct. And that, what? They're all correct. I said, well, let's look at that verse. And then he said, you know, I don't know why that's there. If you can get somebody just to look at it and say, wait a minute, we have a problem here. So what is the answer? The answer is God in his word. He says here, but now, in verse 25, now to him that is of the power to establish you according to my gospel and to the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of the faith. This is hard work. It's not easy. It was not easy for the King James translators, but somebody plowed before they arrived. That's right. 
and someone laid the groundwork for them. It's our job, church, to plow and to lay the groundwork. And if no one listens to us, if no one will hear us, it's still our job to follow the word of God. People have come, people have gone. The King James Bible is still here. And if he tarries his coming, people will come and people will go and his word will still be there. That's the goal that we should have in a faithful and accurate and true and then one day a mature translation of the word of God. Not first edition translations are perfect. Well, the King James was. That wasn't a first edition. Well, yes, it was. No, how many English Bibles were done before that? Yeah, six that we know of. And so the seed was sown, and they built upon that. And so I tell our translators, listen, put in the first page of your Bible. I just, Brother Hicks that did the uh, French Creole, I just got a New Testament that was printed by a Berean Baptist in, in Indianapolis. I said, what edition is this? He didn't know. I said, well, how come you don't put in the first page what edition this is? We need to know that. When you're gone and I'm gone, who's going to know what edition this is or where it came from? Who did the translation? You see, that's the problems that we have. No one's taking care of issues like that. I say no one. There are some, but we must be careful with this to make sure that one day in the French Creole and in these other languages, they can say that now they have a faithful, accurate, and true and mature translation of the word of God. Remember this word, marketing. If the news media says it long enough, we start to believe it. I mean, I don't even have to prove that to you. And the Bible societies have marketed with unlimited resources, money-wise, to market their lie and their promotion. And the people in our congregations have believed it. But the people that stand behind the pulpit must stand for the truth yeah. and teach our people what is true. Brother Brown. 